On August 15, 1965, Major General T, commander of the South Vietnamese Army, received critical information from a 17-year-old Viet Cong defector. With intel in hand, Commander T rushed to American lines and reported, I have the most important intelligence information of the war. The United States had uh, individual soldiers deployed to Vietnam as early as the late 1950s, serving as advisors to the South Vietnamese Army. But we had not yet committed any ground troops to the war in Vietnam. But in 1961, we did, the U.S. Army deployed its first unit, which was the 3rd Radio Research Unit. The 3rd Radio Research Unit was codenamed for U.S. Army Security Agency, or ASA. Soldiers assigned to these missions electronically scoured the thick jungles of Vietnam, which offered ideal cover for enemy ambush. These missions were very, very dangerous because they would often go out for week-long missions to try to locate the uh, enemy. And the equipment that they were using was temperamental at best, um, not really made for the type of environment that they were fighting in. Well, that develops a couple problems. One is you have to be real close to the enemy if you want to get the ground waves, or you have to be real lucky to hit the sky wave and know where it's coming from. So what that does is it forces uh, the soldiers of the 3rd RRU to get really close to the enemy. And one of those times in December 1961, they're going to get too close to the enemy and they're going to get ambushed. On a road near the old French garrison of Cao Zhang, the Viet Cong ambushed 10 members of the 3rd Radio Research Unit, resulting in the first ASA casualty of the war. Specialist James T. Davis. So when Davis is killed on one of these missions, the Army is looking at how can we make radio direction finding much more effective. So you have a group of um, researchers back here in the United States really working on this issue. And what they come up with is let's take this ground radio direction finding equipment and let's put it on an airplane and put it in the air. And that is really the birth of airborne radio direction finding. The ability to track enemy forces through rugged terrain was now in the cards. And guiding tactical operations against the VC would soon pay back in spades. In August 1965, for the first time, RDF aircraft is used in a direct support mode for an American operation, and this is Operation Starlight. So the Starlight is a, an early famous operation. It's an early example of what's called the Enclave Strategy. At one of these particular Enclave bases, the base known as Chu Lai, Americans realize uh, through intelligence that there may be a fairly significant contingent of VC not very far from their base and potentially going to attack them. This intelligence warning of an enemy attack was first discovered during the interrogation of a young Viet Cong defector. After Major General T provided intel to American commanders, ASA ground units began communicating with ARDF aircrafts. During the operation, ASA ground intercept forces would collect the enemy locations, get a general idea where the enemy were, and then they would send the ARDF aircraft over, and the ARDF aircraft would be able to get specific locations and then be able to track the enemy as they move. The VC believed they had several weeks to plan for the Americans. But in three short days, on the morning of August 18th, the Viet Cong awoke to Operation Starlight, a landmark assault made possible with the support of ARDF. It's almost impossible to overemphasize how important ARDF was to the American forces in Vietnam. In one survey, uh, the ARDF operations, that, that intelligence they got from our operations, accounted for 90% of the timely usable intelligence uh, that the Americans were able to get. Operation Starlight would go down in history as the first major U.S. victory over the VC, as well as a breakthrough moment for airborne signal intelligence assets. General Lewis Walt echoed that opinion when he stated, the intelligence produced by your units was a clinching factor in the decision to launch this operation. 